by Owen Rooney? A lot of people have phoned in and, and, uh, and wondered if you are morph grown up, because they've seen a picture of you <laughs> on the website. Do you mean me or Carl? <laughs> Carl. Right. Yeah. What do you mean? No, because uh, people have seen you uh, next to a picture of Morph, and it's exact. if you draw around- Honestly, Carl, if you lay you down and draw around you, it's exactly the same shape as Morph. Yeah. Some, uh, or the Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs> or, yeah, a gingerbread man. <laughs> 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 you do look like a gingerbread man. That's great. <laughs> oh, oh! I love- Carl, I lo we think you're brilliant. We like looking at you, talking to you, hearing what you've got to say. We think of you, don't we, yeah. in the week sometimes? Rick, I had a bit of a good news this morning. Go on. And I don't- I mean this in any way, I'm sure it's an emotional thing for her, but uh, in the sun it says that Dido, uh, her wedding's off. Right. Just thinking, ding dong! Because <laughs> for some reason, I don't know what it is, I was having a chat with my mates, I've always been under the assumption I could pull do Dido. Because she's- Because she's quite ordinary, do you know what yeah. I mean? She looks a bit ordinary, she's quite an attractive woman, but like- Would that you be your opening chat up line? <laughs> you look quite ordinary. Dido, I don't think you could probably get anything better than me, yeah. because you're not too hot yourself. <laughs> exactly. My name's Steve I'd go, Merchant. I'd wear, I, I, actually, what I'd do is I'd go, right, I'm not gonna meet you in the flesh, but no, I'm gonna send a video, video on video. Yeah, yeah, yeah this is me great. on Top TV Masters, what <laughs> yeah. do you think? <laughs> See what you think. Yeah, <laughs> and if you think it's good, well I'm certainly no worse without the light in a makeup, <laughs> so don't worry about that. <laughs> exactly. Oh, oh Dido, do you have a little bit of Bowie? Do you have a little bit of Bowie? What was your thing about Dido, that uh, she's like a kind of... She's a bit like a receptionist. Who she? got up and sang once, because she At met karaoke. her tunes, and uh, a bloke came up, uh, I'm, uh, Griddling Records, I'm thinking <laughs> of releasing a CD, and it just goes yeah. mental. Exactly. Everyone buys it. Yeah. Which is good though, isn't it? But she should be doing photocopying or filing, <laughs> do you not think? Just the way she looks, she's got a very kind no, of superb look. the whole look thing annoys me. Do you know there's another pop stars thing starting? Yeah. Right, like it's going on in, in, in Ireland, apparently it's, it's Ireland's version of it. Okay. And today it was like, you, you saw all these kids rushing in, there was fat ones there, and ugly kids, and you're thinking, it's sad and everything, they might have a good voice, but they've no chance, <coughs> right? And there was a woman there who looked a bit like Brittany, and the bloke, straight away, before even hearing the voice, uh, Brittany looking like over there, go and get her in, give her a ticket, she's through to the next phase, and it's just annoying. Dido isn't beautiful, but I, it, she's nice enough. Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah, that's why she's fine for me. I mean, I, I, you know, she, you know, know I mean, my standards are quite low. So, do you think Steve should go out with her then? I mean, that's what <laughs> we're asking you. Do you think he should? Yeah. Okay, so a little bit bowy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Carl. Try and fix that for next week. Fashion, David Bowie. We were doing a bit of bit of Vogue in sort of cross with body popping there, weren't we, Carl? Yeah. Yeah. Played that last night, Rick, during the set. Yeah. Uh, that was described by uh, Zane Lowe as uh, one of the best sets he's ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Well, he didn't <laughs> say those No, 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 but I, I, I think uh, Zane just sent an email and said he's giving up because there's no point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If, if, when he hears stuff like that, he said, I, I, I thought I was a DJ. Yeah. After seeing Steve Merchant, I'm obviously not. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. No, so, uh, yeah, Big Boy uh, Jim was down there. Yeah, he, Big uh, Boy Jim sure. was going, wow, I've, uh, you know. I don't know what I'm thinking. Yeah. But I like the idea because you know, uh, Fatboy Slim did uh, Brighton Beach, didn't he? And he had like 20,000 people in Brighton Beach. Yeah. And China, everyone was loving it. Yeah. Just the idea of me down in Western Supermare doing the same with, with 80, the donkeys. 86 people. Have you, ever <laughs> seen, exactly. have you ever seen that thing, Karaoke Challenge on exactly. uh, Chinese TV? Yeah. It's oh, great, yeah. they're all doing it, and it's sort of like um, Jonathan, what's his name from Jonathan Bread, Morris, and, yeah. and all, all those sort of uh, people there. And the, the camera falls out, and it's about eight people there. Yeah. But what I love about Karaoke Challenge is it's not even night fever. Can <laughs> 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 you imagine that? I mean, talk about. <laughs> Wow! <laughs> oh dear, we tried to get on that once, didn't we? On Karaoke Challenge? Yeah, we were doing that comedy yeah, we lab. Oh, we were, we were doing in character, yeah, wasn't we? Yeah, we were doing it. Yeah, it's David Bowie. So we'd have a little bit of footage, but yeah, that'd they, be great. Yeah, they that wouldn't was, even let that you. That was on. terrible. I remember, that was how minor a celebrity you were at the time. I remember once, right? This is how sad we were. We tried for about an hour to get on the Chris Moyle show. They were doing a competition. He was doing this competition. Um, uh, it was about golf, wasn't it? So it was like things with. Uh, um, it was, no, it was, yeah, it was, you had to think of a, on, a song title, yeah. but you had to make it into a, a golfing pun. And people were calling up and going, now what about Drive by the Cars? He was going, Drive by the Cars, very good. And it was like, uh, uh, uh things like, you know what I mean? Things like something T and that. And I wanted to phone up and go, hello, Chris Miles. Yeah, you know, what about, um, Spandau Valley Golfy Golfy? <laughs> Just be, <laughs> and I was just like, we tried, we must, I was just about Power 30 quid to just to get on and do something stupid, how perfect And they wouldn't even let us on. What yeah. were the others? It's a good game, that. Well, oh, oh, God. Phone in if you've got any amusing puns on oh, songs golf. and golf. Yeah, please. What did you say? What was you? A <laughs> Spandau Valley Golfy <laughs> Golfy. <laughs> uh, yeah, do you like that one? It's a good, game, good little game. Uh, yeah, you're thinking, else? you're thinking of... What are you doing, Carl? You're thinking on the radio. That's what you're doing. <laughs> it's a first. You're actually broadcasting thinking. 
Can we just be quiet and just listen to Carl think? Yeah. Oh. Anything? Got anything uh, there? Any golfing puns? You know, it, it, some pe people say, Carl, it's impossible to catch yourself not thinking. Now, I reckon if there's one man in the world... Hole in my shoe, that fella and the young ones. Hole. <laughs> and there's one on a golf course. <laughs> Has he got a little cold as well? Cause you're, yeah, you're... I'm f well, I was telling uh, Steve before I went on the tube last Saturday night. Yeah. Kills me. There's, there's, every time I go on the tube, uh, I just get full of a cold and everything. I'm full of flu and it's, it's down to going on the tube. Is it? Is Someone it? told me that every time you go on the tube, it's the equivalent of smoking two cigarettes. Really? Because of the, the sort of gunk and pollution down there. And have you heard the other one? And, and, and I always smoke two cigarettes yes. on the tube. Yeah. Yeah. It's in my nerves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the name one about the, uh... Oh, there you go. All the air, all like the hairballs that are in the tubes. Oh, because yeah. of like, people stood on the platform, mm. trains go whizzing past at high yeah. speeds, yeah. right? Takes a bit of your hair off. Don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, you mean don't question the science of that? Well, no, he means... Because of my It doesn't head. affect him. Right, oh, I see, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And, um, apparently they all get caught up in the, in the tunnels and they have to, like, clean it out now and again because there's big hairballs on the, on the lines. It's a, it's on the lines? On the, on the, on the train lines. Right. Yeah, it's a terrible place. So that's why I'm all bunged up. And that's, when you came in today, I was, like, looking on the websites to see <laughs> how much badness there is down in the tubes. <laughs> yeah. How much badness is there? Oh, loads. Is there a lot of badness? <laughs> if you know how much badness there is on the tube, call in now, eight, seven, what sort of things eight, 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 one, two, three, four. How much badness is there? It was just about, you know, the germs, how there's no fresh air, and that's why I was asking you about people committing suicide on, on trains and that, how often it happens, and apparently two people, uh, a week. Was it two, two a week or two it's a day? Two, it's two, oh, it's two cigarettes. How many people is it? Two oh, eight, people. Seven hundred, eight hundred, one, two, three, four. How many people per cigarette is it like <laughs> killing yourself on the tube? <laughs> Call in. Two people a week try and kill themselves or something. Right. On the tubes. Really? Yeah. yeah, it is. Terrible. Should we play a record? <coughs> if you want. Have we got the big new Eminem single? No, I was gonna, uh... Oh, we'll, we'll tease them with that. We'll play that a bit later. We are gonna play it though. We're gonna play the new Eminem single. <laughs> we will. Plus, of course, obviously we've got this big, uh, celebrity bag to give away as well. Oh, yeah, let me just... Quick, well, no, 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 let's, let's, let's play, play the, the, the competition after that. Doves. Doves would be good. Eminem, Without Me, on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant. Hello there. Little Carl Pilkington. Into the last hour, three hours of broadcasting to go, Carl, for us. Three. Yeah. yeah. What three are you going to be doing while Three we're musketeers. Because you'll obviously still be working here. You have a day job, don't you? What is it you do exactly? I make stuff. You make stuff? Like what, like furniture? Promos and stuff. Oh, right, right, right. Sort of a bit of in talk there, but basically like little trails for the station. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's what I do all week. Yeah. Uh, so you'll be back to doing that when we're off. You well, don't talk to anyone, do you, in the week? You just hide in your little sound booth thing and you really don't talk to anyone, do you? Much? Not really. No. no I mean, you, you know, you might call up. Yeah. Uh, but no, I keep myself to myself. Yeah. Then you don't get bogged down in the office politics and stuff. Sure. Yeah. Is there yeah. a lot of office politics here? I don't know. I don't get involved in it. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Proved your point. So, so, so yeah. when, um, we're away and we're, like, out of action, who, who, other than Suzanne, who will you talk to of the day? How will you get a sort of uh, uh, f feedback from the world? How will you get sort of like input and? I always, if I've ever, uh, if ever I've got like a, a question on anything, the internet sat there and I can just go on online and find out. The what internet I is is good. It's brilliant, but it, it's not all verified. What do you mean? Uh, it's not all verified. It's not all factually necessarily factually accurate. Anyone can put things onto the internet. It's that you know that's it's it's free. I've done here, I've been through a, you know, I uh, don't know what the word is, a, a bad experience. Trauma. A trauma, yeah, I've been through a load of trauma. Mm. So I'm just finishing it off with a little sort of picture for people. Go on then. In my ward. I know it's called my ward. Me, a Chinese fella and an old bloke who looked like Mr Burns from The Simpsons. Don't know what was wrong with him, but breaking wind was the symptoms. No one visited him or called him. He seemed quite lost to me. As well as wind problems, he had a colostomy. But when I left, I said, see you to the old man. Turned out the other fella wasn't Chinese. He was from Japan. <laughs> I never found out what was up with him. <laughs> You've got a little picture there, haven't you, of me sat in my ward. I'm sat there with that fella. 
who I didn't talk to, the old fellow who had wind problems, and that's what a poem is, isn't it? But the detail about you thought he was Chinese and he turned out to be Japanese, how is that evocative? That's just a piece of misinformation. It's just I like, like it. I imagine a lot of people make I like it, because you know why? It's like, he even makes digressions within his poem. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, he could have gone back and erased that, but he didn't. He left, he left that digression in, and I think that's, that's great. There was a man on the radio doing poetry, says Carl in his diary. I thought I'd have a go at doing a poem about today. <clears throat> Not really. He had, Steve, I'm, I'm a little bit queasy. He hasn't really written a poem. He's written a, a small poem. No, he hasn't really. Yes. If moths had eyes... <laughs> Fuck me! <laughs> let, let me read the poem, okay? <laughs> Oh, fuck. He wouldn't interrupt T.S. Eliot. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, okay. If moths had eyes, would they be happier? How do they know they're not dead? <laughs> Cavemen hunting for food, but not before they style the hair on their head. <laughs> what would last longer in dinosaur times? A blind man didn't stand a chance. Not with all them rocks about. I'd rather be a blind moth. Hey, <laughs> it may be the greatest poem no, ever written. Just, just you know, dissecting it briefly, you attempt to rhyme in the first four lines, but abandon the rhyming system in the last three. Is there a creative decision can we have, for that? Can we have Carl read that? By Sorry, means, yeah. just, to, no, just, you, just you read it as you would like to. So this is, uh, imagine this, right, okay. This is going out all over the world, this, this podcast. And now, um, Carl Pilgrim, a new poet from Manchester, now living in, uh, London, England, would like to read a, a poem. If moths had eyes, would they be happier? <laughs> How do they know they're not dead? Cavemen hunting for food, but not before they style the air on their head. <sighs> what would last longer in dinosaur times? A blind man didn't stand a chance. Not with all them rocks about. I'd rather be a blind moth. He <laughs> <laughs> said it as though the last bit was going to rhyme. He <laughs> said it like it was going to rhyme. Oh, God. No, I it's think, amazing. I think, it's I, amazing. I, I, think he feels, I think he feels as though the final line, <laughs> I'd rather be a blind moth, is going to be one of those great, you know, those, it, a be... summation that the, somehow the moth is a metaphor. I'd the caveman. Be a blind no, but there's no I'm metaphor doing... in that. He really does mean he'd, he'd rather, rather be, be a blind, blind moth. moth. Yeah, well, I'm just because I've looked at the day's news. Can we always do that, Carl? Can we always find a day, right, and always sum it up in your in thoughts and poem. poem, just like that? Jellyfish. When they were, when they first came out, they were nothing. Jellyfish are, are nothing, aren't they? They're just a blob. <laughs> so when they first came out, <laughs> when they were first released, I knew and, by wrong <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but what I'm saying is, even though they were nothing, they've grown to have a bit of something, <laughs> just to get by in a busy place. Which I don't know same. what you're talking about. It's, it's all guesswork and conjecture. It's not guesswork. I've been it's all nonsense. Week. I've been reading all this and watching stuff. Carl, you haven't learned anything. Mm. Well, that's not entirely true because he's obviously learnt enough to have written a poem about some of these subjects. Oh, I love his poems. Are you getting into poetry now, properly? I really like it, yeah. Um, is Carl going to read this for me, Steve? If you want him to. I think so. I did one about my kidneys. What was it called? Uh, didn't have a name, it doesn't need it. Ode uh, to a Nephron. Right, I did two about jellyfish. Excellent. Uh, I don't like jellyfish, they're not a fish, they're just a blob. They don't have eyes, fins, or scales like a cod. They float about blind, stinging people in the seas, and no one eats jellyfish with chips and mushy peas. <laughs> Get rid of them. <laughs> and then there's just a shorter one about a jellyfish. Um, it would be spiteful to put jellyfish in a trifle. spiteful to put jellyfish in a trifle. Yeah. A little okay. half rhyme. Yeah. Um, do you want the one about my kidneys? Yeah. Uh, 
For God's sake, me belly ache. The doctor said it's me kidney. He said he's got a stick of tube up me knob. I said you got to be kidding me. <laughs> For God's sake, knob ache. <laughs> sort of mildly disappointed that they're quite good. Yeah, yeah. No poet's ever written about jellyfish and kidneys. It's great! Oh, God, I think you might have the market sewn up there. <laughs> it is, it would be spiteful to put a jellyfish in a trifle. You've done another poem? Yeah, you said, you know, just, just do one. If you have a day where you've had a lot of emotions. Well, I, I loved the poem, and so did uh, the listeners, and I knew they would, so if you can do that every week, that would be a joy well, you for can't, me. You can't force a poem, though. No, so I know. So a diary's easy to do, because you just write down yeah. what you're doing. But yeah. you, you've got to have some really meaty subject matter to be able to write a poem, Rick, as you'll discover. I know. Right, so, you know, you've heard what problems I had that day. Go on, then. Bubbled wallpaper. What a mess. <clears throat> Washer dry and knackered. What a mess. Siamese twins separated. One leg less. <laughs> I don't know what rhyming scheme that is again. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh. Oh, fuck me. Okay, man. Anything you can remember from school that you learned that you had to maybe uh, memorize? French. French. Not necessarily French. You could be <laughs> anything. Like... Anything you can remember. This can be anything you remember from school, <laughs> apart from the orange stuff stops cancer. Yeah. It, it, it's not the cough that carries you off. It's the <laughs> coughing that carry you off in. Look at your eyes, Steve. Where's your cough? Go on. Right. This one. Um, remember blockbusters? Uh huh. Right. This one. This one is good, and we'll do this one. Uh, rockbusters. And remember how Bob Olmos used to give you a letter. Yeah. And, uh, um, it'd give you a question, and the answer to that question is that letter. Yes. Right, well, it works like that. So if I said to you, um, you know, I'll test it out in you, Steve, right? Um, right, welcome to the show and that. Hello. Um, let's, let's play, right? Mm -hmm. And I say, right, your first one is W. Mm-hmm. Um, and the cryptic clue, because it's done like crosswords. Okay. Um. So not quite like blockbusters. Well, um, this young man prepared for his death. And it's a W, so the answer. And it's not always going to be like our sort of music, it can be any sort of music that's out there. So the W is the name of? Of the answer. I understand that, but is the answer always the band name, or is it, is yeah. it, it it's always the band name, is it, or the artist? Yeah. And, it, and so would the W be the surname, or would you have both the initials if it was someone's name? <laughs> Would Elvis Presley be EP? Don't no, get annoyed, no. Carl. These are, these, <laughs> these these are questions, questions that I knew would be asked. I know this. You tested it on me. So you've got to tell them. Well, this is the point. The rules. If, if it was Elvis, I'd probably do, uh, I'd do E. No, no, no. Give him the answer. Give him the right, answer. Did you hear the clue? No, give me the clue again then. So the, the, the letter is It w. is a cryptic clue. And the clue is fine. Listen, but, and the clue on. is, this young man prepared for his death. This young man prepared for his death. Yeah. This young man prepared for his death. And it's a W. And it's his first name. That's what he needs well, to see, know. Well, see, that's the, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I don't... Well, shouldn't we have the initials? Wouldn't that make it easier? I mean, yeah, wouldn't... but they didn't do that on Blockbusters, it just had one letter. Yeah, they did. No, they did. They, they did. did if it was a, uh, if... A gold one they often had for three or four did they? letters, yeah. Well, it was normally just one word. It wouldn't have been a name or something. Mm. All right, then. W... W, uh, Y. W, Y. Will Young. Excellent. Right, I didn't so understand it. What this was the young will man prepared young... for? This young man. So he's sort of mi mixed, sort of cryptic. Yeah. But I mean, you know, is, is, is yeah, a good enough, that's better than yeah. usual. No, it's that is better than it's usual. It's not bad, is it? So should we, do you want to play, let's play Rockbusters. Yeah, Rockbusters. Uh, yeah. So how many of these have you got? No, because no, just, 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 wait, 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 wait. let's just clarify a couple of rules here, Carl. Let's just make sure we thought everything through, because I'm pretty certain when they get these things on TV, they at least have a go at them in the office first, <laughs> before they put them straight on there. I'm sure that's how it works. I'm sure Bob Ornish just didn't turn up the first day, and he goes, up, we're all wingy, it'll be fine. Bring the students in, let's have a go. I'm sure they did uh, a bit of preparation. So let's just check, we've got everything, every base covered. Yeah, I've Firstly, got... how many questions have they got? I'll tell you what, let's do this off air. <laughs> right, educate me, Carl. Right, well, uh, what on, you say? Right. educate me. Well, what we uh, what we're looking at this week, we've we've done war, we've done. Um, we've nailed we done? that. We've nailed war. Did um. We yeah. summed up war with a little French bloke whose battle cry was "John's got a moustache." Right. So, and last week we did science. 
What would you do on science then? Airy kid. Brilliant. Right. Yeah. So this week we're looking at, uh, medical problems. I'm sure we do Airy kid every week. Mm. Um, medical problems then. I've got, I've got a couple of things under the banner of, uh, colon then educate me. Yeah. Uh, we've got, um, this is interesting. Right. Do you yeah. know if you have, uh, an operation on your brain, <laughs> right, yeah, what yeah. they do is, the, I mean, this is why I'd never go to the doctors. I don't like doctors because this sort of stuff freaks me out, right? They can operate on your brain and what they do is they put you to sleep first, cut your brain case open. <laughs> your skull, yeah. yeah. Your brain case. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then wake you up and operate on you. So you sat there with your head open. Yeah. Messing with your brain and you well, don't no, feel anything. Well, there's no nerve endings, is there, in the brain? But still, it's not right, is it? <laughs> is it what do you think they do it for fun? No, do they but go, oh, go on, Reggie, wake him up so he'll freak out. Is, it, is, it, is, it, is it necessary that you're awake, do you think, or. Well, they need the brain active, don't they? Yeah, but it is when you're asleep, you're having mad dreams. I had a mad dream the other day. Go on. No, I might tell you about it later, but there's no sense to it. But, so your brain's still, your brain's <laughs> still- it's this conversation. Yeah, I mean, it'll turn out, I go, no, Carl, I was there, that wasn't a dream. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. but, so, I mean, if I had an operation- On your brain, heaven forbid. Well, <laughs> operation anyway, I'd like to sort of think, well, I'll have an injection, I'll go asleep, but when I wake up, it'll all be sorted. Yeah, yeah. The fact that- your brain the case is open. Open, and they wake you up and you think, oh, is it all done? And they say, well, have a look in the mirror. And you, and yeah, your brain- See, I don't think they do that. <laughs> I don't think they try and frighten you when you're doing an uh, operation. Yeah, I don't think that like, you go about your business and they sort of follow you around, dabbling. Yeah. No, but it's almost like they are having a bit of a laugh with you. Right, well, I'd just like to say now that they don't. Anyone who's going in for an operation on their head, uh, do not ever listen to anything but Carl what, says. Wh why have you got to be awake? Because you'll be bored anyway, you'll be sat there. Well, they, they give you a out. telephone directory look and they say, look how many Macs are in there. We've, that's the Scottish telephone directory. And, you know, time flies when you're counting <laughs> that sort of thing. <laughs> no, but do you know, like, when you- What are you- what are you telling me? What are I'm you asking me? I'm just saying how weird it is. It's weird, isn't it? It's like, do you know when you go for a haircut, <laughs> right? It's a bit embarrassing. Well, I don't anymore, but when you go for a haircut, it used to be- a When bit you go for a haircut. It used to be a bit embarrassing when, like, they'd wet your hair and they'd make you have that sort of- Hitler cut because your hair's wet and I used to hate it and I think, do you have to do that? <laughs> do you know what I mean? You know it's what I similar, mean, it's you? very similar to uh, open, um, skull look, surgery. What I'm yeah. saying is, it's almost like barbers like to do that to make you look daft and feel daft for a bit and there's women coming in and out and you're sat there with a daft haircut. Yeah. And this is what that reminds me of. Do you think that, do you think they do it in a shop window, this brain operation? I'm just saying, it's a bit weird. Do you think, why are we doing it in John Lewis's? Just so more people I love the idea that that's what doctors are doing. <laughs> Let's make this guy look a bit stupid. Yeah. Open his brain look case. Look at the twatty look with his brain <laughs> out well, of his head. Take a Polaroid, Reg, take yeah, a take Polaroid. Polaroid. Look at him, look, 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 at, look, at, look at his face, right, do, look, right, clock his face when I give him the mirror. Get this on camera. Put Carl, this fake nose and glasses sorry, on. Sorry, is that, did you teach me something then? Was that well, education? I thought you like your brain, your brain case can be open with your awake. And you just sat there sort of letting him get on with it. Brilliant, I've learned that, I'll never forget that. Right, go on, anything else? You'll love. Let's play a song because the next one is amazing. <laughs> what, even more amazing than that? Yeah. <laughs> play a song? Yeah, bit of Bowie? No email still, by the way. No, I don't think it's working. It's not working Lady today, Stardust. So we'll have to do a phone in for Rockbusters. Off Love the it. Ziggy Stardust album. Alright. Bit of David Bowie. Uh, when's that ever at anyone, Steve? Never. Lady Stardust off Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. Carl Pilkington is in the middle of educating me. Colon then, educate me. Right, so, um... I've learnt that you can, you know, fiddle around with your brain when awake. That's brilliant. I've never been a fan of doctors though, so this was a good one for me to, yeah. to look up, because... Yeah. Did I tell you the time when, uh, the doctor said uh, I was gonna die? All right, keep talking. Right, ages ago, um, I was about 15, right, and, uh, at lunchtime there was this, we used to have a choice of stuff to do at lunchtime, right? We used to have, um, like a, like a burger place that had an arcade machine in it, right? So we used to go there and play on that and have a burger. Or, there was this baker's, right, that my mum worked at and, uh, did great cakes and stuff, right? So, um, she used to like bring some home and that, but she couldn't always bring them home every night because 
you know, they, they cost money and she used to get them for free. And they used to say they'd rather chuck them away than give them to the staff because there's a chance that the cream might be off. Right. Right, so they used to chuck them round the back. So I used to go round the back with my mate and eat a load. Brilliant. Yeah. Scabbing, eating out of bins. <laughs> no, it was really, it wasn't out of bins, they were still in trays but they just stacked them up near the bins, right? So this got out, I mean it used to be chocker. Yeah, once the school found out, everybody used to go there and it'd be like, well, have a cake. <laughs> Headmaster probably <laughs> yeah. fighting the kids off. <laughs> right, so I'd have, uh, uh, you know, you'd just eat, I don't know, six jam donuts or something, and then you'd spend your dinner money on the arcade machine. Brilliant. Right? So it was a good, good afternoon, really, right? So you'd do that, and this one day I must have had six or seven uh, jam donuts, a few Congress tarts. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh. Just, I love them, it's me, I can't get them in London, right? So I'd have some of them. And if anyone maybe... can get a Congress car, um, for Carl in London, please let him know. So anyway, this day, that, that was just a normal day, do you know what I mean? You'd, once yeah. or twice a week you'd have a load of cake. In your life, yeah. Yeah, so a normal anyway. day in your life. And uh, were the frog boys there with the, with the <laughs> webbed hands and the big heads? So... And the horse in the set, uh, yeah. But the day after, one of these days, I had really bad cramp in my belly. Mm -hmm. I was like, in agony, could yeah. hardly walk, so I said to my mum, oh. <laughs> You could hardly stagger to the free cakes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... I was in absolute agony. I said, I think, I don't like doctors, but you'll have to get a doctor in because I don't know what it is, I can't walk. She gets the doctor around, uh, I won't say his name, but he said, uh, he said, well, doesn't look like he's got long left. Blimey. So I was a bit like, hang on a minute, I've only had a few cream donuts. Yeah. My mum was panicking. Sure. He went, my dad came in from work, she said, oh, something's really bad with Carl, I think it's serious, it's, you know, the doctor said he ain't got long left. So he said, what, he said that and just left? So she said, yeah. So I'll have to call him then. So he called him up, said, uh, what's all this about, you know, Carl hasn't got long left, how long's he got? So he goes, oh, I was only messing. He's just got, he's just had some bad cream. Can you believe that? <laughs> well, the thing is, <laughs> I like the fact your mum didn't ask any questions. I know. <laughs> she didn't yeah, go into detail. Now, 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 well, I, can I, you I, explain I, more, Doctor? No, I got a show off. No, I, but uh, she doesn't. She I, doesn't no, like no, I'm, you know, I don't want to diss you or your family, but I imagine if I was there, I'd have known the Doctor was joking. <laughs> yes. That's all I'm saying. I mean, I, 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 I sound very arrogant there, but I imagine he went, what's he been doing? Yeah, I had about six cream grounds. Oh, right. Oh, wow. Uh, he hasn't got long to live then. I'll see you later. <laughs> yeah. That's what I think the Doctor did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the idea your mum just let him go. Yeah. Terrified, thinking, yeah. well, I'm not going to prove him. He's, he's, that's it then. Dad comes in. Hi, honey, I'm home. Anything happened? Uh, the doctor said Carl's going to die and then left. <laughs> Did he? I'll call him. <laughs> but anyway, that's why uh, these sort of things fascinate me. So right. we'll move on to this next one, right, which is brilliant. Go Dead on. short story. So, right, a uh, old woman, about 70 years old. Yeah. Uh, she's normally fit and healthy and stuff. Nothing wrong with her. She's having a good life. And uh, one day she goes for a check to the doctors, yeah. just to check herself out because she's yeah. getting on a bit. Yeah. Uh, says take your clothes off and that. So she does, and uh, checks her out. Says yeah, you're looking good. You're looking good. Uh, turn round. Uh, he said, oh god. He says you got a, a tumour on your buttock. Right. So she goes, oh. What can you do anything to sort it out? So they go, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we'll book you in for an operation. It's best if we remove this. Books are in for an operation, operation day comes, strip her down and that, they're all stood round, the doctors, start to operate, it only turns out it's a pork chop that she sat on five years earlier and it had stuck to her buttock. Right, Carl. <laughs> I right, can forward I, I, you. I'm, I'm not, honest. Right, I'm, no, I'm listen. Not, okay, no, no, let, serious. Let me, okay, Carl, I'll tell you now, I'm leaving. I'm no. never, I'm never doing this show again. No, I'm serious. Honestly. You're talking, I, I, I've never had such but you are, play a record, play a record. I can't believe it. it. What do you mean you can't believe it? Stop, stop the record, stop the record, stop the record. Right, okay, right, what do you mean you couldn't believe it? No, when I read it, I said I've got to uh, tell this Richard This woman I had a pork chop stuck to her ass for five years, you mental case. <laughs> of course she didn't.